What's going on? It's Nate Savage here, and we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics in this lesson for Guitar Foundation, and that is picking, right hand picking. And whether you play acoustic guitar or electric guitar, or you know, it doesn't matter what style of music you play, you need to learn how to pick single notes accurately. And you can do that with your thumb, you can do it with your fingers, or you can do it with a pick. And what we're going to focus on in this lesson is doing it with a pick. So there's a lot of te technical things and technique to get down. Uh, try not to be overwhelmed here. It takes a long time to develop your picking. Just focus on the basics here. I have another list for you in the Guitar Foundations ebook. It's called uh, the Clean Picking Guitar Technique Checklist or the Picking Technique Checklist. Um, let's go through that first and you're going to want to read through that several times before we get into actually working on some of this technique just so you can have your ducks in a row and start being aware of the important things as far as the technique goes. Actually before we get into the list I want to talk about which pick should you use because a lot of beginners are like there's so many picks out there how do I know which pick to use and I have um, little picks in here with a, just a ton of picks in it. And what I would recommend doing is just starting out with a regular teardrop shaped pick. You know, just like a fender medium. Just a medium standard shaped pick. Um, if you have too thick of a pick, it can be tough at first because it gives you more control, but you have to have a looser grip on the pick, which is hard to do when you're just starting out. If your pick is too thin, it's going to be really hard to control, but it's going to be easier to get through the strings. Not as hard to uh, have that loose grip on it. So. Take this with a grain of salt, but you know, you can do, use whatever you want, but start with maybe a, a medium 0.7 millimeter regular fender heavy, or medium pick. That's a great place to start. And you can go down or up from there. You can change uh, the material of the pick if you want. You can change the shape or the size of it. It's really up to you. A lot of it, after you get past this initial um, just intro time use, with using a pick, is just personal preference and what you like. All right, let's get into this picking technique checklist. Number one, Relax. If you tense up, it's going to be really tough to get the pick through the strings and you're going to open it away from maybe some injuries or stuff or at least fatigue as you work your way through your practice session. So as you're practicing and working on uh, getting your picking in order, just be aware of any tension like locking up your wrist or locking up your elbow or like really just muscle tension in your shoulder or something like that. If you feel any of that creeping in, stop, take a deep breath and start over. Number two, use the minimum amount of the pick as possible to make the string make noise. So if you have your pick and you're digging into the strings with like a bunch of the pick, try not to do that. Use just a very minimal amount of pick, just a little tip there. And that'll make your life a lot easier. Just keep that in mind. Number three, don't lock your wrist and strum just from your elbow like this. Sometimes for certain types of music and certain passages that works, but in general, if you lock your wrist and just strum from your elbow, it's going to start hurting your elbow after a while. Just keep, just be aware of that. And this has to do with the last tip or the first tip, which is relax and be aware of any tension that's creeping in. Don't lock your wrist and just strum from your elbow. And I'm not saying don't use your elbow at all to pick, because I do when I do when I pick. You can see that. But I'm not just locking everything else up and using my elbow. Um, it's a combination of fingers, rotation, and we'll get into this more later, and elbow too a little bit. Number four, use small efficient motions. So if you're trying to play something fast, something like that, if you have really big motions, it's gonna be really hard to get fast and accurate. So if you can keep your motions small and accurate, when you're picking, like that, just small, relaxed. It's gonna be easier to be accurate and quick later on. Number five, experiment with your pick grip. And this is something that's super personal. Like if there are a billion guitar players in the world, there are a billion different pick grips. No one's is exactly the same, so you're gonna have to experiment and find out what works best for you. But a really good way to start this, it would be just to stick your pick out in front of you and pick it up as naturally as you can in your hand. And that's a good place to start. Make sure to stay relaxed. Um, one thing that's gonna be a variable for people is how much they curl their finger in. Some people curl their finger in all the way to their palm. Some people more like point at the guitar and pick. So experiment with that. 
and you're gonna notice when you do that, your thumb is gonna come from being bent one way to being bent the other way. So those two things are kind of the two basics for your pig grip. Experiment with how curled your finger is, your next finger, and then with how, um, whether your finger, your thumb is bent this way or the other way. And number five uh, is affected a lot by number six. And that is experiment with the angle of your picking. As you work on your pig grip, watch what happens when I curl my finger in and uh, bend my thumb this way. The pick is angled more down toward the floor. And when I do the opposite, point my finger at the guitar and my thumb goes out like that, the pick ends up being angled up more up towards the ceiling like this. So it's the difference between this angled downward and this angled upward. And you can even have somewhere in the middle like a neutral position that's parallel to the strings. It's really up to you. It's just uh, something to experiment with as you go through these exercises and think about. So angling it down toward the floor, more neutral, or up toward the ceiling. Number seven, and this is, we already talked about this a little bit, but it's experiment with your basic picking motion. You can get your basic picking motion from your fingers, your wrist, like a rotational movement with your forearm and your wrist, like that. You can get it just from your wrist. You can get it just from your elbow, right? Uh, I tend to do a combination of all of those. But just being aware that there are different methods or techniques for moving the pick. Just fingers, just wrist, rotational movement with your forearm, and your elbow. Those are all things to think about and just experiment with as you work your way through these exercises we're about to go through. I know there's a lot to think about, but as you move forward, just be aware that it takes a long time to develop your picking technique. and. Um, this is something that you can change over time. If Try different things out and if something's not really working, switch it up. And if what you switch it up to works better, go in that direction and just try new things all the time. All right, let's go through some basic picking technique just from the ground up. Stick your pick out in front of you, pick it up in as natural a way as possible. And we're not even gonna worry about our fretting hand. You can either mute the strings or fret one note or play an open string, it doesn't matter. The idea is that we're kind of dividing the challenge here and only focusing on our picking hand. So grab that pick as naturally as possible and put it on the top side, the side towards the ceiling of the high E string, rest it there, and then using just the very tip of the pick as little as possible, just move it to the strings by pressing down. And you'll notice like when I did that, I'm using more of a rotational movement with my wrist. And just do that over and over again and start experimenting with fingers, wrist, forearm rotation, and elbow. See what works best for you. Mess with your pick grip. Mess with the angle of the pick. You can go angled up more like this. You can go more parallel to the strings or pointing down. The important thing is that you really experiment with everything on that uh, t picking technique checklist to see what works for you. I know that's a lot to think about, but just go through this really slowly, no rush and think about each point of the clean, of the picking technique checklist and experiment with each one to see what works best for you. All right, let's move on to the first exercise that uses just downstrokes. And one thing that you're gonna realize pretty quickly is it's important to do this exercise on every string because the thicker strings feel different than the thinner strings. We're gonna use uh, the G string to start out with just because it's in the middle, it's kind of a neutral one. And the idea here is to just play whole notes, thinking about your technique and really refining it. So playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just over and over again to really get the mechanics of that downstroke down. Once you feel comfortable with that, without a metronome, you can throw on a metronome at, I don't know, 60 or 70 beats per minute is a good starting point. And um, if you need to speed it up, that's totally fine. If you need to slow it down, that's totally fine too. Here's 70. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we're not trying to conquer the world here, we're just trying to build up some accuracy and start to find out who we are as far as our picking hand goes. Um, once you're feeling comfortable there, you can move it up to quarter notes. 
so things are going to be coming a lot faster at you, and it'll be really apparent if you need to you know, like back off the metronome and slow things way down or not. But here it is, 70 beats per minute, quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So if you need to stop the video and just go through that checklist and then work on these exercises without a metronome, then with a metronome, I encourage you to do that. To do that. If you're feeling comfortable with this up to this point, we're going to put the other half of the equation into motion right now, and that is upstrokes. Upstrokes on the guitar can be really weird feeling. I think that's because a lot of uh, newer guitar players tend to use just downstrokes at first, and then when they try to learn upstrokes, it feels really weird just because it's not as developed. Uh, but it's the same idea. Put your pick on any string. Let's do the high E string and put it on the other side of the high E on the bottom towards the floor. Mess with your pick grip, try to be as relaxed and natural as possible. Use just the tip of the pick, and then just pull up. However it happens, it happens, right? Just don't have any tension there, be as relaxed as possible. And I'm using a lot of that rotational movement. You could do fingers, which is more hard, more hard, and more difficult with the upstrokes. You could do wrist. Rotation. Or a little bit of elbow in there too. But take some time, work on your upstrokes because it is something that a lot of newer players neglect, at least for the first while of playing. But it's important to get down and have them to be just as strong as your downstrokes. And pay close attention to the results you're getting. If you're tensing up or if you don't like the way something feels, you know, change the angle of your pick or change your pick grip from here. To here, whatever it is. You can even do the two finger pick grip. It's up to you. Everyone's different and different things work dip for different people. Work better because our bodies are all so different. So just with no metronome, just do some upstrokes on the high E string. If you don't want to hear it ring out like that, <laughs> if it's annoying you, just mute it. If you need to stop the video and work on that for a little while, a couple days, a couple weeks, that's totally fine. Uh, Work on the same exercises that we went over. Once you're feeling comfortable without a metronome, metronome uh, do it with whole notes with a metronome at 70 beats per, per minute. And once you're good with that, move on to quarter notes at 70 beats per minute. Here you go. Whole notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. All right, let's move on to the quarter notes, 70 beats per minute again. And I'm gonna fret in it this time. Uh, maybe this A note here on the fifth fret. One, two, quarter notes, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Be really aware of any tension that might be creeping in. Play around with your pig grip. Play with the angle of your pick. Really experiment. All right, that's level two for this lesson. Level three and our ultimate goal here is going to be to do, be able to do something called alternate picking. This is a foundational technique for guitar, for pretty much all genres of music. Um, alternate picking is just when you have a downstroke followed by an upstroke and you never repeat two ups or two downs in a row. So you're always alternating between down and up strokes like this. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. And it can be really tough to get this down. It's one of the, the finer techniques of playing uh, any kind of lead lines or even uh, rhythm guitar lines that are just thrown in in between your chords. So let's walk through some basic alternate picking technique. And if you've been working on your downstrokes and upstrokes on their own, then this shouldn't be too bad for you. Start off with the downstroke just like you normally would. Place the pick on the high E string. Just go down. And you don't want to go too far. You want to have efficient motions like we talked about on the checklist. So just, just move it enough to make the string make a sound. That way you're in a good position to come right back into an upstroke. So push just a little bit past the string and then come back with an upstroke. And really pay attention to the angle of your pick and that you're, how you're choosing to move the pick. I'm doing a mostly rotational with the wrist. I'm going to put fingers in there too, that's fine. Some elbow. And you don't have to be fast. All we're doing is working on building this basic 
motion right here. So spend some time with that on its own without a metronome. Alternate picking can be tricky at first, I know, so it might take some time to get that down. Stop the video if you need to. Once you're feeling good with that, you can incorporate this alternate picking with the same two exercises we did earlier. Just whole notes and then quarter notes. Here's whole notes, 70 beats per minute. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, when you're feeling comfortable with that, kick it up a notch to quarter notes and really watch out for any tension that creeps in. The faster you speed things up, the more opportunity or the more you're probably going to want to uh, tense up. So, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Really small motions. Just the tip of the pick. Stay relaxed. Pay attention to how you're moving the pick. The angle of the pick. Try to make it as even sounding as possible. And be sure to um, do this, like I said, on all six strings. It's really important that you spend a little bit of time on this, on each string. So once you're done with the high E string, go to the B string. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's gonna feel a little bit different. Once you're done with that, for a few minutes, go to the G string. Two, three, one, two, three, four. Then from there, you can move on to the D, A, and E strings. I won't make you sit here and watch me practice all of those uh, picking exercises on all six strings, but it is something that you should do and implement on a regular basis because the high string feels way different than the low E string for getting that pick through the string. So this is a lot to think about and a lot to work on. Uh, let me encourage you, you don't have to have all this down perfectly before moving on to the next lesson or a new topic. Picking and working on your picking is something that um, takes a lot of years to refine and you can always get better at it, but just developing the basic uh, ability to play on all six strings is what we're looking for here. Here are your assignments for this lesson. Number one, experiment with different picks to see what you like in a guitar pick. Number two, read through the picking technique checklist several times just to get all of those tips ingrained in your brain so they'll be right on the forefront of your mind as you're working on this technique. Number three, work on your basic downstroke picking technique using the picking technique checklist with and without a metronome. Number four is downstroke exercise one, and number five is downstroke exercise number two. Number six, work on your basic upstroke picking technique using the picking technique checklist with and without a metronome. Number seven is play upstroke exercise number one, and number eight is play upstroke exercise number two. Number nine, you guessed it, work on your basic alternate picking technique using the picking technique checklist without a metronome. And numbers 10 and 11 are just the alternate picking exercises number one and number two. This is a pretty involved technique and topic, so if you need any extra feedback, you can always schedule a private lesson with me on natesavage.com. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you there, or you can email me nate at natesavage.com. Work on this a little bit, you know, a couple days, a couple weeks, and uh, you don't have, like I said, you don't have to have this down perfectly before moving on to the next lesson where we're going to talk about using your first scale on the guitar. See you then.